What's up, everybody? How you doing? I'm back with a quick video. I do a quick live impressions of. I've been wanting to get this out. I've been traveling, and uh, let me head over to the the video screen here. See if I'm live. Off I'm live. Where am I? And there I am. Yeah, a little bit of a, a little morning show, but I just wanted to get this content out there. Just to kind of give my impression. I've been traveling this week. So, um, yeah, I'm going to definitely come out with a, a few videos. You're going to be uh, getting some double headers here. I might even do some recorded stuff uh, moving forward. But um, what's up, Wound the Penguin? But, yeah, um, just want to – I'll wait till the, the grinders get in here. And I don't know if this thing's working so because I've been bouncing around to different streamlabs. But what I wanted to do is do a quick live video on just some of the – you know, if you guys had any questions. What's up, D? How you doing? Um, you know, Death Stranding and stuff, because, you know, that happened. And I know the biggest kind of thing that I, I do kind of want to talk about is my impressions of XO19. Yes, I know. Yes, uh, I will be doing that um, probably later today. I have a couple things to do today. I'll do it probably a little bit this afternoon, um, and I'll do that one. And that will be one definitely to come out to. But, you know, for one of the things that I, I wanted to talk about is just kind of the Death Stranding stuff and, um, you know, some of just the Kojima things. I know it kind of seems like old news, but I just wanted to get my kind of, like, impressions out there because I did stream Death Stranding for a couple of times and, um, you know, about 10 hours into it and, uh, you know, I am definitely enjoying it. I can't wait to get back into it because I am, I have been away. Um, definitely wanted to, to jump back into it. Uh, but I wanted to just give some impressions of it before you know, uh, before it goes away, but I, I'm definitely, th while it's fresh in my head. So, um, you know, one of the things that, that I, I sort of, when I saw the reviews at Death Stranding, one of the things that I was a little bit, uh, concerned about was just the lack of kind of combat. And now I was like, oh, so there's not too much combat in this. It seems like, you know, I thought there was more to the gameplay than what was shown, but obviously it's been the packaging and the, the delivering. And I know people are making fun of like, oh, yeah, UPS man and stuff like that. But you want to know what? It is satisfying. And it's something that's really hard to explain and to, you know, um, convey over over um, the interwebs on uh, how satisfying it is to deliver packages in this game. I don't know if it's the mechanics of the balancing um, uh, but I think one of the biggest things, and I'm going right into the gameplay because you can see the graphics and stuff like that. But one of the biggest things is the, um, everything in the game so far that I played with the 10 hours, everything you choose to do has consequences. You choose to go a certain way. You're going to meet the consequences of that environment. Um, you know, there was issues where I went into and there was a wind tunnel and the wind actually pushed against you. And that was challenging to try to get through the the wind tunnel. So you're you're forcing against the um, the wind currents, or you go a differently um, a different way. Hey, what's up, Silverback? How you doing? And you go a different way, and uh, there's more terrain there, and you want to try to use um, you know, did you bring ladders with you? And if you choose to bring a ladder or you choose to bring supplies, they have weight to you. So that counters how much you can carry, either for the mission or completing other people's missions. So one of the, the cool aspects that I think really is kind of pulling me into it is just the ability to um, grab other people's packages and the whole connected kind of world, which I think really is something that I think might be copied in the future. Um, definitely it's an injection of what Dark Souls and, and, and those games, Demon Souls, have where people drop tips and all that other stuff. But, um, oh no, no, Sam Ash. I'm talking more about the gameplay and my impressions of the gameplay. I'm not talking about the, the story at all. Um, because I think everybody could see the story, the, the graphics. The game looks looks amazing. It looks amazing. When you're out in that world, what's up, Lincoln? How you doing? Um, you know, when you're in that world, uh, it, it's, it is pretty much uh, amazing. I don't know what's going on in my stream. Why does it stutter? There it goes. Yeah, I saw it stuttering. But yeah, it, when you're in that world, it's amazing. Uh, but one of the things that you know I, I saw from the reviews that I'm not seeing is this whole kind of grind. Because I thought that basically you will grind a lot to get this stuff. I saw people with highways and bridges and, and motorcycles, and I'm like, oh my god, what level is that at? You know, like, I can't wait to get there. And believe it or not, within the first five hours, 
you already have the ability to get a motorcycle and drive around on a motorcycle and build a bridge. And the story comes at you real quick. Like, you kind of know what's going on, what's the, and, and not all of it, but you, you get an idea of what's going on. So I thought that it was going to be, like, the way he rolled it out, the presentation, I think that he made it a little more suspicious than what it was, um, you know, just not talking, like, showing certain elements and things like that. But really, they kind of tell you right front, like, the bridge babies, like, what that is, the death stranding, like, what goes on with the bodies, like, what has happened. So it really hits you in the beginning, like in the game. And there's a lot of cutscenes in the beginning. Yeah, you know, definitely you can see from my first streams that there are. But the thing is, is that it comes at you fast. So I thought it was going to be a slog of just doing little delivery missions and just going the grind back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And no, actually to have purpose, you know what you're doing. You you have to do like, you know what you like it, it it everything has consequences and reasoning and then you also you level up and you get more abilities and you get things to grow um you know to to build a bridge you also get um abilities to uh manufacture batteries to manufacture uh lockers that you can put stuff in and you share the locker and people input um you know resourcing that you could put into your your headquarter bases so you could build and almost like a crafting mechanism and then what's amazing is that when you're walking through there doing your mission in an area that does is not on the network it's all kind of just you know you and the terrain but then when you put them on the chiral network all of a sudden it lights up and you get signs you get warnings from other online players. You get um, you get bridges and ladders and stuff. So the the trek out there. So like for example, the wind mission where I had to go out all the way to like this this um, na naive like this, this this place that was really remote for this wind tunnel. Going out there was different. You know, it was raining and you got slippery rocks. You're going down. You got to look at the terrain and it's more of like a puzzle. You know, and the fact is like, hey, do you want to walk on your side? I'd rather walk straight, holding on to my stuff and. It's it's a balancing act. Is it twisted? I don't know why they're blocking me. Sorry, man. Yeah, hit that notification button, guys, and you know, encourage people to hit that subscribe button too. We gotta get the grinders the grindhouse built up because I'm gonna be doing my next video of the XO19. So we're gonna have double headed today. Um so um yeah, so like going out there was fine. But then when I add them to the network coming back, um all of a sudden there was a bridge there. There was like there were ladders, there were warnings saying yo here are the here are the the d the db the d uh the dbs, uh, not dbs oh my god no not gears, the dts are over there, you know and uh, and it's like don't go over there don't go over there and on my way back I actually went a whole different way I was on the side of a cliff, and I was trying to build a bridge. Now the thing is is that you need eight hundred metal which is very hairy to carry to complete a bridge so you could start the base of a bridge very easily you know but it takes more resourcing to do it and actually people online will build the bridge for you like if you put the base there if they people want it they'll put um they'll put resourcing into it and then i even put resourcing bts thank you around the penguin I even put resourcing to make the bridge sturdier and to have more energy to it because what happens is that as it gets weathered, the bridge gets damaged or the, the, the items that people put there get damaged. And if people don't put resourcing into it and, and find value in it, it will go away. And this is the aspect of this game that really just encapsulated me because as you continue to play the game, these worlds get bigger and bigger. Yeah, those highways and and, and try exactly. People, you need the community to build these bridges, and then you also need the community to maintain these bridges. Because if nobody, if somebody says, "Hey, that bridge is useless. I'm not using that one," because somebody built a better one right next to it, no resources to go into it, and then the rain and just the environment will basically demolish it. It will just deteriorate, or you could delete it entirely. Which that would be crazy, but what's also awesome is when you come online, people they say how many people used your bridge, how many people used your your locker. Like there was so many times where I was just coming over a cliff, so far in the first ten hours, and I would see just a locker there, and I'm like, holy crap, this is I this is great. And I will go to the locker, and there'll be like other people's kind of lost lost stuff in there that I could throw. And then I'm looking at how much weight that I have, and then you also have to look at as it's on your back, is it damaged? Because you don't want to cash it in damage because you're not going to get enough, you know, um, 
leveling up, you won't you you lose the merit. You get the merits for that. So you want to like manufacture some spray. Uh, yeah, see, Sam Ash built a level three lockup, and that's the thing. It's the connection that's really the the the, the, the thing that keeps you that makes this kind of travel, this transverse, which in itself, if that wasn't, the thing is, is that everything, like I said before, the biggest thing when I'm finding in Death Stranding is that everything has consequences. If, if you were just running across the environment and it didn't matter if it was inclines, declines, rocks, grass, if it didn't matter, then none of this stuff really would have impact. But because the weight on your back, on if you're holding more to your right side or to your left side, if you're walking on an incline, if you're going downhill, you have momentum that could take you right off the cliff. If you if you're climbing up a cliff, your stamina goes down, your shoes wear out, and people might say oh, that's micromanagement. But the thing is, is that these are all gameplay elements that are put into the transversal that add to the the, the stress and the tension that when you see Sam Ash's level three locker sitting there. You might go out of your way to check out that locker because there might be some good stuff in there. Or, you know, you can't make it with you're over encumbered or you just can't make it. I'm going to leave my my items here for somebody else to take. So it basically what it's doing is that it's risk and reward and everything has consequences. What's up, the coon? How you doing, man? See, Twisted Sink says he's on level five and finding stuff to do. Yeah, I'm telling you. Like, if 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 the transversal, what's up, Eddie T? How you doing, man? But yeah, like if you exactly, and then playing with the AI is pretty funny too. Like the mules, you're right. Uh, and then when you go in an area, like you 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 have this stuff on your back, your stamina is dropping. There's some rain coming. You could see the storms. You hear the storms. It's like, oh no, there's rain coming. And then you get the warning sign that you're in a mule area and they're fi- they're trying to look for you. And do you have enough to you, – can you – I remember I sticked the, one of those the pegs into the ground and carried down a rope and w- went down a rope. And um, you know if you didn't have that, I couldn't go down that cliff. I would have to go back through where the mules are to, to take you over. And again, like I said, everything has consequences. And one of the things that I brought up in one of my streams was it kind of reminds me of – I don't know if you remember this. This is an old school OG Xbox game called Steel Battalion. And when I'm in the the menu and I'm putting on the different packages on how I'm going to travel, it's how you do your weight management. Now, in Steel Battalion, it came with that big-ass controller. It was like a realistic mech game. But the whole setup was how do you configure your mech to optimize weight and mobility? And, like, if you want to load yourself up with, like, three Gatling guns, I'm going to go rockets on my head and this, you would be top heavy. And you would not, you would come out there stumbling or it will be harder to control your your mech. Um, In other instances, if you say, hey, I'm just going to put some light machine guns on, you can maneuver around people and flank them. And it was this kind of, every choice, everything had weight. So you couldn't just load up your mech and run out there and start dropping like you know firebombs on everybody you actually had to calculate on did you want to have mobility How, did you want to be heavy to the left side did you want armor on the left side to to kind of like come at people from the left so you you have your you you know you, you don't go straight on because do you want your armor in the front which will reduce your visibility everything had consequences but you had to like load up your set up your stuff and steal battalion and load up your mech and it was weight and stuff like that and in this game i feel that kind of element when i'm putting these bags on and i and i like that has the auto optimization like it'll automatically configure them for the best kind of optimization so you're not top heavy or or you know strapping stuff to your left side that you're more favorable to tip over to the left and 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 people might, you know, joke about it, like, oh, this is stupid and stuff. And again, I'm not saying this because just to, and going on to the Kojima stuff. Like, yeah, and that's where I'm at. I'm at the city right now with the river. Exactly. Yeah, I'm at the city now with the, with the river part. I've done a couple, bunch of side missions. Um, I really been just kind of just wanting to be <laughs> wanting to deliver stuff. Like, it's just it's so satisfying to just deliver packages and and just. And not just the missions, but just to deliver the packages. And, you know, 
get somebody else's package and deliver it for them or leave a package for somebody else to deliver. And it, it's it's this camaraderie. It's really it's really really streamlined and really cool. And um I I I really am enjoying it. There's something very captivating with it and just something where you know, it's a puzzle but it it still has a little bit of action but it has that tension. And I'm not a fan of the Dark Souls games. Like I don't like spawning miles back and and you know and all this other stuff and and you know losing experience and and you know being punished and stuff. I'm not a huge fan of those games. So, you know, there are elements of this where you know the community helps you. Um in one instance, I had to go across the rocks. Uh, you know, and get to a level, and I got pulled into the Death Stranding. That's right, Grind's Delivery Service. Yeah, and I want to be the best delivery. Like, you know, I want to have that that star rating, and, you know, they rate you. And also what's interesting, too, before I tell you about the other part where I, I didn't stream that part. I wish I did. But um, my last, like, five hours of gameplay, six, I, I wanted uh, – what's interesting is is that it rates you on everything, like the condition of the packages, right? The condition of the packages, if you took – um, the same, like if you took the same path, like it shows you your path going out, but if you took a different path back, you get bonuses for taking like your own path. And, uh, you know, and exactly. I need those five stars. Like, I, I'm just like, I want to deliver like the best I can. Like I want, like, you know, I spray my bags before I hand them in, you know, you could, you could spray in the front or you could spray on the back and spray your stuff behind you and hand it in. Now, again, coming off of call of duty, this is not call of duty. This is not even Metal Gear Solid. It's a different type of game. It's a, it's a, it, it creates a tension. And like I said, the biggest thing is that everything has a consequence. Everything has a purpose. And some might call that micromanagement, but it, it it's if it didn't have the purpose that it has, like if, if your shoes didn't wear out with stamina, or if you're over encumbered, your stamina doesn't get replenished. Those stupid monster energy drinks, that's a product placement, but they build your stamina up. The room where you go take a shower and take a dump. The thing is, is that you do that stuff. They collect your biology samples, your biologic samples, and use that to power your grenades because the BTs actually have the DTs. I keep calling them BTs. Oh, my goodness. No, the what are they? The DTs, BT, BTs, yes. The BTs basically, you know, are, are vulnerable to your to your bodily fluids because you know because of story elements. But the thing is, is like that has a purpose. Like it's not just like, hey, let me take a shower just to see a stupid animation. No, or well, see his ass. You know, <laughs> like no, it has a purpose. They collect samples to empower your grenade. So everything has, and I didn't even get guns yet. I didn't even get guns yet. I, I've been using my grenades. And, um, and actually I just been just creeping around, man, but, the, but everything, what's up social, how you doing? And guys, as you come in, like the videos, hit that subscribe button, share it out. I'm going to be doing this probably for another, a few minutes. I'll, I'm going to take some more questions and, you know, to get some more impressions on it, but yeah, definitely, uh, you know, like, and subscribe to, to the channel. Um, but the thing is, is like, so the part that, that was really cool, I finally got into, um, I got captured, right, by the BTs. So I'm going on my motorcycle, and these things just, they got me. You know, they, they when you creep in, you hear the sound. You hear them, like, crawling, crawling, and then they just show up. And then you can do your scanner, and that thing's just flapping around, just going, blah, 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 like, you know, where the stuff is. And where those BTs are. And then, like, if they come, you, you see the footprints coming after you. And after they catch you, all of a sudden they come out of the ground, and it's like this tar. And they are just trying to pull you into the death. Like, it's basically death just pulling you in. Think about the end of, like, you know, bring me to hell or whatever. Like, they're just bringing you down. They're trying to kill you. But then what happens? They pull you down. It goes to, like, some cinematic. And it, it takes you. It's really cinematic. It's cool. It just takes you away somewhere completely off your journey. You lose all your luggage. All your luggage is gone. Like, it just flaps around. Like, just lose it. And it takes you somewhere else. And then you fight this thing. Yeah, I'm going to talk XO19 later on today. I'm, uh, I just wanted to get my Death Stranding impressions out there first um, while well, it's fresh in my head. And then XO19, we're going to talk about that one. Um, you know, stay tuned because that's coming. Um, so so it takes you away. And then uh, and then you fight that 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 uh, boss guy. And what's crazy is that, um, yes, that's what I was going to explain right now, that boss fight. So 
I don't know if that's the only... I think there's other boss fights because there's other enemies that I've seen, like uh, monsters. But this thing's like a some sort of um, like whale squid thing. And it keeps shooting. It shoots at you and stuff like that. And uh, and what's really interesting is that I ran out of grenades. And then you see like souls come up out of out of the tar and they throw like, like a, a grenade at you, like a package for grenades to give you more stuff, like other people that died or in the Death Stranding. And then I just, it was very tense. I trekked out of there because you, your baby's done. Like, the baby was just, like, shot to hell. Like, the baby didn't, um you know, was, was just crying. And I'm trying to crawl out of this stuff. And this thing keeps coming after me. And, again, it's not, like, ultimate boss fights, action-packed thing. But it's just tense, annoying. And then after you get out of it, it's like, oh, crap, I got to go back and get my packages. Or my bike is shot. Like, it doesn't just respawn you somewhere. Like, it, you have to go back. Consequences. Go get your packages. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, the the acting and and presentation, top notch. And that's why I'm talking directly about gameplay because everybody just seems to say like, well, what's the gameplay? You know, gameplay is so important. You know, it's all about the gameplay. A game has to be fun. It has to be fun, 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 fun. The difference is is that, like I said, everything has consequences. And I don't want to to compare this to to Sea of Thieves at all. But I know people are like, well, these are fetch quest missions, just like Sea of Thieves is fetch quest. And one of the things that I just say the difference is, is that Sea of Thieves had an issue with um, with progression and narrative that you felt like you were just doing this stuff for no reason. The whole point of this game is that I said everything you do has a consequence. Everything you choose, at which way you go, left or right, has a consequence on how you're going to transverse that land. That's the thing. And then when you come back, you get the upgrades and the things that you get. You get the motorcycle. You get the ability to bridges. You get to carry more, more, um, more luggage, like more, more packages. And you know, and just to seeing the leveling up, people are showing like you could drag packages with a with like a with a with a, a, a crate, like you could drag them. You could put, you could attach them onto your motorcycle. You know, there's there's so many things. There's progression, and then the narrative on top of that of why you're doing what you're doing, and it's satisfying to put people onto the chiral network because then it opens it up to get all those online interactions where people have put have put structures there for you to help you transverse that area. Like when I was riding the motorcycle, you know, people built, there goes my thing. People built batteries along the road. So like when your motorcycle was going, your motorcycle would get charged with a battery. And, um, and yeah, if you go the wrong way or if you go on a side of a cliff and it's like, oh crap, like you got to work your way down or figure out how you're going to do it. Scan the terrain. Is there something you could climb or are you going to slip off? And lose your packages. There was one thing where I took um, a ladder and laid it across two rocks to cross the bridge before I could even make a bridge. Me use the ladder to walk across, right? And as I'm walking across the ladder, I stumbled off the ladder and lost my packages. Two or three of my packages went down the river, and I jumped onto the side of the river because it was too deep, and. I got taken down the river, right? And then I made it to the side, and then I just see my packages with my names on floating down the river. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not losing those, you know? So then I followed along the river, got into a whole BT thing that the river got you to, you know, went into a whole BT sneaking around. And as I'm sneaking, I'm I'm alongside the river, and I just see my packages going down. I'm like, I got to speed up because this is going to – this keeps going. The current is taking it away. Um, so eventually I was able to, you know, grab them and, and, you know, and get to the side of the, the river bank again. But, um, it was so, um, it was just compelling. Like it was all, it was just compelling because I didn't want to lose packages with my name on them. Even though I know probably somebody will then pick them up online and then like, you know, deliver for me or something along those lines. But it was just, it was very, it was very interesting. Yeah, and that's what I have to say about this game is that it's really interesting. And, you know, to, to kind of bundle that into what Kojima was saying with his quote that everybody ran wild with and, you know, where he was kind of criticizing some of the, the reception that the United States gave with the reviewers, which wasn't the review, lowest review scores. Australia had the lowest review scores if you want to do them by country. But, you know, with him saying that, you know, Americans typically like shooters and action games and, you know, just didn't 
understand like you know they don't just understand this and then at first it says that it flies higher um and then that was mistranslated to to talk about that it's just um not that it flies higher but like that it's just um the scores higher i don't know how somebody says scores and flies in, in translation in japanese but whatever you know um the thing is is that kojima thinks he's a rock star i'm not a huge kojima fan you know i'm not I never like like I said I've been Xbox for the longest time. Like I I had a PlayStation original. I had it I was Nintendo really and then Nintendo just I grew out of Nintendo and I said I want to play online hardcore games, shooters, you know, Unreal Tournament, Ghost Recon, let's go Xbox, the hardcore box, the shoot, let's go. And then the 360 just capitalized on that. Now Microsoft as we saw from XO19 has gone the way of the Dodo Bird in in cartoon games. Uh, trying to be a Nintendo, a poor man's Nintendo. Um, and we'll get into that in my next video. But basically, you know, I really never played his stuff. I never, I, you know, I only played Metal Gear Solid 5 when Don Matrick told me that Kojima was a thing and he used to bring him out on every E3 stage like Mickey Mouse um, and say, hey, here's Kojima, you know, and he's bringing Metal Gear Solid. I was like, oh, okay. Metal Gear Solid 5 was my first game and I really liked it because it had similar elements of you had to prepare for the mission. And this whole consequence thing, you know, and, and, you know, how are you going to approach your mission? And I liked Metal Gear Solid 5. Um, it was definitely some of it a little lengthy and it got a little repetitive, but, you know, going back, cleaning off, like, you know, if you were all dirty or covered in blood, like he his, his emotions would go down. So you had to go take a shower and stuff like that. Like, it was interesting. Like it added depth to it. There was a lot of depth. There was a lot of nuance in it, but it wasn't too much where, um, it became tedious and boring. Um, the missions kind of got a little like repetitive after you finished the first land. Like after I was done, I went to the second land and kind of got repetitive. But um, but again, like and that's why I said this is my ten hour impressions of this game. But the way it's been progressing, I think that's the biggest um, compliment that I can make. That this game seems to be very uh, rewarding. Like it's it's it's. I was very surprised because of the reviewers saying that it's a slog it you're doing the same thing it's boring i'm thinking sea of thieves level stuff i'm like oh crap oh man this is gonna be boring as hell but the thing is is that like i said with the consequences and actually with the um you know with the rewards and how you're leveling up and the ability to do bridges and get them a motorcycle and then there's vans and then there's trucks and then there's highways and then there's the the exoskeleton then there's ways of transporting your stuff like and then there's different types. There's the enemy camps and things like that. And you can steal their boots and, and, and do all those other things. And then the whole structures are being built. The, 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 the layering, it just keeps layering on top of the, of the game. And, it, it, and that's where, the, the, where you hear people going, I just want to get back into it. I want to progress. I want to keep doing this stuff. Because th there is, there is, there's a progression. There's satisfaction in that. And everything has a consequence. And um, and as you get new rewards and unlock things, you know that. And then the narrative on top of that, the story and the details of the story and the characters, the enemies and things like that, that kind of brings it together. And that's why I wanted to lead with the gameplay because a lot of people just say the graphics, the story, you could see all that. And it is definitely some of it's long winded, but it's very interesting and intriguing. And it's so well done that you just want to watch and the emotions of the face, similar to any other kind of game, like with Uncharted, God of War, like you. The thing is, is, if it seems fake, it seems like it's not worth your time, you're going to skip it. But if it, you know, but if it seems like it has value, you're going to watch it. Yeah, well, it's Pokemon. Pokemon, you know, or sort of, sh I, whatever. I got to get Pokemon anyway. But anyway, yeah, I don't know. But, you know, the thing is, then back to Kojima's thing, I got a whole sidetrack. But what could you? And that's what I do here, guys. You know that grind is <laughs> that, that. That's the um, you know the emergent discussion that I have with myself and you guys. But uh, one of the things that I'm saying is like, you know, obviously, you know, I have to agree. He's not wrong in the fact that different regions have different likes. Like you could just say all the Japanese games, like Japanese game is basically like mobile games. They like to play on the go. You know what I mean? And actually, if you even look at it, there are JRPGs and there's Western RPGs. And what's the difference? The JRPGs are usually the kind of anime looking. They also have turn-based combat. 
And a Western RPG is sometimes like a Fallout or Mass Effect, where it's a third-person, first-person shooter, or has some sort of shooting elements. But you look at Fallout versus Final Fantasy three, and you're always talking about they're Westernizing Final Fantasy. Are they brand- it's the reason why. Because there's an interest for more action. What's up, Cyber Dragon? How you doing? But yeah, like there there are definitely different regions that 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 like different things. So he's not wrong in that. But I do think, you know, Kojima does think that he's a rock star. I think he thinks he's part of Hollywood. And um I think too that, you know, he might have been just kind of talking down some of the low review scores. Uh, and, and also where he was at, you know, we always talk about Phil Ness. Like, Phil talks differently when he's in Japan or when Korea or China than when he talks in the United States. So, like, he was kind of peasing to the European audience. He was talking to, to Italia, you know, Italian magazine and, you know, talking about Europe and, and Japan. And, you know, definitely more favoritism to the people that are viewing uh, interviewing you, you know, than, than if you were getting interviewed in America. Like you wouldn't say that stuff in, in an American publication. So, you know, the guy thinks he's a rock star. Yeah, I think he's wrong for trying to make excuses for the, the, the scores uh, because that's just one person's opinion. And like I, I showed before with the Kojima's game, um, you know, the, the girl from GameSpot who had such an issue with Days Gone because of, you know, the, the social aspects of it and the social impact of his, the guy's uh, relationship with his wife and, and you know, the albino uh, zombies and stuff like that, the freakers. And she had such an issue with that. And she gave it a six or whatever in that, but then gave Kojima's game with all its undertones of political structure and people together. She loved that and gave it a nine. Again, it's one person's opinion. And everybody it can be swayed different things. Some things could trigger people, some things can't. But to kind of just claim that the whole country is compromised because of our likes for for guns and, and you know, shootings and stuff like that and all that other stuff, action games and stuff like that, that's Western you know, civilization there. Like uh, that that's a little far fetched. But I could I know where he's coming from in the aspect of there are different interests in that stuff, but I wouldn't necessarily say like those kind of games get higher review scores because people like those games. But, again, because it's one person's opinion. And, to gen- you know, with generalizing stereotypes and all that other stuff, um, you know, it's always bad when you generalize and stereotype. And that's what kind of what he did. Uh, yeah, exactly. They love horror games. Resident Evil. The tank controls. What do they have to do with Resident Evil? A social, exactly. What do they have to do with Resident Evil? The tank controls. Japan, that's how they developed it. But guess what? They had to make it more action-oriented. They had to make it a third-person shooter-esque. Like, look at what Resident Evil 4. Like, look at Resident Evil. Look what they've done with the Resident Evil games. Look at that to fix Resident Evil 2. You know what I mean? So there is definitely different aspects and different expectations when it comes to the different regions, what Europeans expect, what Japanese, and stuff like that. And that's one of the things that Sony has has a thing with, with that they have a global audience. They have a global structure, and, and they have to do that. And that's where you see Microsoft trying to get into that because they used to be the shooter box, and now they're trying to expand and get Japanese stuff and artsy games and, and stuff like that, but it's just like, you know, they need balance, and that's that's what we're going to talk about X 19 impressions later on. But, you know, back to the, I just want to keep this focus on Death Stranding and Kojima. Like, um, I think the game is really good. I, I, I'm enjoying it. You know, 10 out of 10s, I don't, you know, I can't say now, but, you know, I, I'm just saying that I like that it's a mature game. Everything has mature consequences in it, and it's very technical. Exactly what, what, what Social says, that it's a very technical game. You know, it's a, it's a very technical game, and it's and, and, and I wouldn't say it's, it's belaboring micromanagement because it's not really that because, again, when, you're, when you pack up and get ready to go, you want to make sure that there is, you know, you have enough resourcing. Do you have enough ladders and stuff like that? And you really don't have that much information. Yes, you're right, Mog. I remember the tank controls were purpose to add more tension to the game, right? Exactly. You're right. Yeah. And that's why, but, but you know, they did change it, though, Resident Evil. They did kind of, they had, like, Resident Evil 5 with the co-op and stuff like that. Like, they, they definitely went more of over-the-shoulder, you know, third person with them. Um, and then again, what they did, Mog, remember? And then what they did is they gave the zombies guns. 
that's what they did. So they removed the tension of the tank controls and they said, zombies, you guys have guns now. And you shoot back at them. That was the ridiculous, though. I thought that was ridiculous. The, the Resident Evil 5 with the, zo- with the zombies with guns. But yeah, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> but it is what it is. But it's always bad when you stereotype and generalize, obviously. But, um... Oh, really? Yeah, the Star Wars game? I, I, I'm i not... I, I'm going to get Pokemon because my son and I were going to do the Pokemon thing. He loves Pokemon. But the, the Star Wars thing? I don't know. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to wait and see. And EA, being the, the, sh- the, the shady bastards that they are... Didn't put the game in uh, EA Access. So, uh, screw you, EA. And you're going to get... You son of a bitch. Yeah, there's a grinds board right there. I'm glad I'm back with my grinds board because I was away from it for a while. But, yeah. They didn't put it in there for me to even try it. But, anyway. Bullshit the Star Wars thing. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to get Game of the Year. The Game of the Year awards, actually, Keely was talking about them. You know, uh, Joystick Awards, I think, or something like uh, today. I don't know. The Game of the Year, again, is another subjective thing. Everybody's going to have their own personal Game of the Year from what they played. You know, you don't play everything. And then the same thing, these Game of the Years. You know, yeah, I got to catch them all, baby. Catch them all with those pixelated graphics. Can't wait. <laughs> That's right, OBJ, from Xbox to Disney Box. Uh, Disney Plus has more mature content than what was shown in X019. Oops, sneak peek. Sneak peek. But, yeah, I'm definitely going to talk about that. I'm probably... Looking at what I need to do, I'm probably going to do that maybe around uh, 3 o'clock today. Uh, around the 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Hit the notification button. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, because, again, I'm not too sure when I'm going to do it. i got to see where I have a little window to to really you know, d- do what I want to talk about with XO19. And, again, it's not going to be a total bash fest because I did like it. Some of it. One thing of it. But there is... <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it goes on. Oh, man. I got to save it. I got to save it because it's too early right now. I just wanted to get my Death Stranding because I meant to do this a couple days ago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Black Friday. Oh, I think Star Wars will definitely be on sale. Wait till when the movie comes out. Star Wars will definitely be on sale. That's the way EA rolls. You know that? Uh, but I got to wait because I heard there's some glitches and stuff like that. Again, it's a, it was rushed out. Um, I feel some people are saying it's rush hours crashing. There's huge load times in it. So, like, after you die. Um, so, I don't know. Like, I, I'm wait. I, again, I want to get back into Death Stranding. Um, I've been away for it for a couple of days. Um, I definitely want to, you know, do that. I'm going to hit head on the boat and stuff like that. And, and it's, yeah. I, I'm, again, I'm really enjoying what I like. Again, it is not Call of Duty. And it's not action-packed uh, uh, Vin Diesel. I don't play this game. You know, it's not It's not that. But what it is, it's great. It is, it is really good. And I think elements, I, I think moving forward, and and I, I don't know who was saying this. Was it, I don't know if it was Gaming Forte. Somebody was saying, like, uh, these elements will be copied. Like, I definitely think. Like, I think this is kind of the next evolution of, of kind of, of of social inactivity because we've seen this in uh in you know Death Stranding and stuff like that. But the fact that and, and also Minecraft ish, like where people are collaborating and building this world, but it impacts your gameplay and your ability to do the missions and ability to navigate the terrain. And that's the aspect that I think is really cool and I hope that gets copied moving forward. In other open world games where they're not necessarily online co-op, like running through missions, but actually where, and not MMO, where kind of combat is, is zoned down or the the animations are not there, but a kind of a full-fledged open world game, but other people have impact, um, you know. But again, the reason why they have impact is because the navigation of the terrain is tense and the physics and the way you're capturing the packages and the gameplay is that way. Like I said, everything has consequences. If somebody just dropped a bridge and you could just run through a lake, like if you could just swim through a river or run through a river with no issues, then somebody putting a bridge, and this is exactly, like if somebody putting a bridge there means that you could transverse across that bridge or you have to look along the river for a way where you can pass. So you could save time if somebody built the bridge. Now, 
if I could just run across the terrain and just run into the river and swim across, you know, no stamina, or anything, just run across, somebody putting a bridge there will mean nothing. I'll be like, oh, that's stupid. Who cares? When I could just run across and swim across, no consequences. But because the river has depth, and it could sweep you down the river. You could lose your packages and stuff like that. And you can fail the... Mi- or you could have to add more time to your mission or add more headache. The thing is, is that that bridge there is a lifesaver. And you maybe want to take some of your resources and ensure that that bridge stays there. So for you when you come back. Or upgrade the bridge so like it could it could withstand the rain. The tit- the, I keep saying Titanfall. The Timefall rain. You know, or like, you know, put resourcing into it so that you could put storage, you could put mission things like a bunch of ladders and, um, you know, you could store some ladders in there and some other um, and, you know, ladders and, and, um, and some rope. You could you could add upgrades to it. See, that's what's cool. So you, you basically are building this world. It's really interesting, Re- really, really compelling. And I hope that's but again, it has to do with the, the, the people saying, oh, look at them tip over, look at them, that stuff. The thing is that that element is there because th- because it makes the other aspects highlight the other aspects. That's the thing. And that's something that I have to commend on this game, you know, gushing over it. Now, issue-wise, like negatives about it, I-, I really, as of right now, I'm just seeing more of kind of differences of what the review has said where it's a slog, it's boring, it's just delivering packages, it's monotonous, it's tedious. I'm not seeing that. And I'm somebody who's very impatient. You know what, OBJ? I, I I really enjoyed Days Gone. Again, I really like that game. You know, I, I think I think it had a, a great story for a new IP that really pulled you in. And again, people were complaining about the motorcycle. And this is where I think where we need to take open world games. I think we, if you want to, you got to add some realism to the game. And I think Zelda did this too with adding stamina to Link. Like he couldn't just go jumping all over the place. Like he had, he had to, you had to maintain a stamina bar and people didn't like that. But the thing is, is that you got to think of where the next, like where we're going to go. And like if you could just jump on a motorcycle and drive wherever the hell you want, then the slog is not there. And Red Dead tried to do this. Where you have to maintenance the horse and stuff like that. I don't think it hit as well as, as I would have liked it with the horse. I felt like it still was just tedious. You know, there, there was no impact with that one. But the fact is that to maintain the maintenance and the gasoline on the motorcycle didn't make you just drive around and run over freakers all the time. And the thing is, is that this maintenance and, and management of this thing has consequences to where you go in your game. And similar to Death Stranding. You can't just go run out there and go run across rivers, jump on rocks, jump off of rocks, no fall damage. Like The game would then be boring, actually, if they took away those elements. The fact that they add this tension and where you go. Yes, degradable weapons and stuff like that. Yeah, degradable weapons is annoying. I agree that that I, I don't I don't like the gravel weapons like that. That is kind of annoying. I like the transportation, though, like the tra- like the mo- the maintenance of the motorcycle and uh, and, you know, the whole thing. But the yeah, weapon degradation and like you pick up a rusty gun and then that gun goes away and blows up or fires back at you and stuff like that. that that's kind of annoying. That I do agree because that's that especially if you're a combat kind of game like like that like you know, you know Red Dead like if it was a combat game it had elements of just like you got this like dusty gun and stuff like that. So the thing is is like we don't want too much micromanagement, but there has to be a balance. The thing is that it has to have purpose and consequences, and not consequences that belabor or artificially extend the game. You know. A last example I want to leave you guys with the grind is, and I appreciate you guys coming out. I know it's early, and like and, and share the video out, and you know hit that subscribe button. Um, I grew like a bunch of subscribers, and I want to thank you again. Uh, but one of the things I want to say is like you know when you have a game like I don't want to say like, like Fallout or something like that, and I don't, Fallout has some of this stuff. But the thing that drives me crazy is when. I have to go to a castle to progress the mission. Right, I go to the castle, and there's a guy there. 
click on the guy, and the guy's like, oh, blah, 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 tells me a whole story, and he goes, well, before I let you into the castle, because that's the story mission, you need to deliver five turnips to the lady down the street because she's upset that her garden is not growing these turnips and you got to give her five turnips. Okay, fine. I'll go get the five turnips. So then you got to go buy the five turnips from the store and then you got to go bring them to the lady and give her the five turnips. Then when you walk up to her going, here are your five turnips, she goes, I really don't want these five turnips. There are these animals that keep coming into my into my garden and destroying all my turnips. So I need those animals to go. Here's the location where I last saw them. Okay. Here, now you got to go into the woods and you got to kill four or five wolves and bring back their skins. So now I get the skins and I bring them back to the lady. I'm like, here you go, lady. Look, I killed the 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 you know the um the wolves, and uh, and now your turnips can grow. Well, these turnips that you gave me are bad. I need seeds to to plant my turnips. Can you go to the store in the village and tell this man that I I need these seeds for my turnips? Now I go into the, the village. Now I get a new area in the village. I, I'm supposed to get into the castle. All right. Now I go into the village. I got to go find the seeds for the turnips. Now I go find the seeds for the turnips. Well, the guy who sells me the seeds for the turnips goes, you need the special water to grow these turnips. And you got to go to this area to go grab the special water from this lake. And it's like, oh, here we go again. So now I got to go to the lake. Like, and, and just basically to get the turnips to the lady. Then the lady tells me to go to the guy. And then I go to the guy. Like, you're doing a bunch of fetch quest missions just to either lengthen the game or just waste of time. I want to get into the castle. Why do I have to deal with this turnip lady? And that's the stuff when you're playing it, you're just like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why does this lady needing turnips and me killing wolves have anything to do with me getting into the castle to talk to the king to find out what the hell's going on in the story? And that's the stuff where you feel like it's just artificially extending the game. And that's what I thought. It sounds like a Bethesda game. It may be. I know I got it from just like a troops of just, it does sound like a Bethesda game. Like it, it, it's not, and, and you know, I just got to get in there. But these five different people now I got to satisfy. And every person you go to, they're like, well, you're supposed to give me the turnips, but then they send you on a mission because you can't just give them the turnips and get back to the castle. You got to go. This, go kill the wolves. And then this guy says, wait, these wolves will bother me. And it's just, that's why The Witcher 3 was so amazing. Because the side missions actually had story. They had purpose. Now, when I was hearing about Death Stranding, I was thinking like, oh my goodness, is Death Stranding like that? Where I'm just running back and forth. Oh, deliver this to Fred. Deliver this to Paul. Deliver this to Fred. Paul, Paul, Jim, Paul, Fred. Did, did, for, for, for the first five hours of the game. Just give them packages. But oh, I don't even know what's in them. Death Strang's not like that. I can tell you that. And that was my fear. Reading those reviews and then hearing about this, I'm like, oh my god, is this like a Bethesda game or, or one of those games where um, I gotta do just this grind of just transversing and stuff like that. The other aspect of Death Strang, which is interesting, is that so far in the first 10 hours, in the first area, the, the travel is not that it's, it was so much longer on Red Dead. Like, it was like 25 minutes, 30 minutes on a horse just slapping it. But the thing is, is that the it's not that far. Like, you're not going, like, like you know, like for an hour of just blatant, like, just trekking. Like, I think the missions are, are just enough to add the tension, to, to settle the terrain and get to the mission and get back. It's nothing where it's like these these, these journeys. And I think that's another aspect that there is some immediate gratification in the fact that you're not trekking two hours across a map on foot through snow and ice and 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 sand on foot. But on top of it, you get the motorcycle, so then you could start doing that, and that goes over terrain, and you don't have to worry about stamina and stuff like that. So that's why I was surprised on how quickly that is. So I do think that there's a sense of this is gratification rather than this kind of transversal where Red Dead, I remember I played Red Dead online and it was like, oh, I don't know Red Dead online different, but like, it's like, hey, go to the town and the town is just so far away. And you're just like, 
And they're telling a story. And you only could go a certain speed. And you're just like, okay. And they're talking like, hey, Jim. And I think that's where it's just kind of like, yes, I'll listen to the story. And then you click on the cinematic camera. Like I learned that trick where just let it go automatically holding the A button down or the X button down and let them go. Because it just was like a 20-minute conversation and just, just like just walking with cinematic camera. Um, I think that's where I, the GTA games kind of drive me crazy with some of that stuff. But, um, you know, the thing was that with that Stranding is that it's not like that. You know, they're pretty close together so far. Um, Sam Ash is halfway across the country right now. Yeah, and that's why I'm like at the Mississippi right now. That's why I'm crossing. Um, but, yeah, like... What I'm saying is, like, this purpose. And, again, that's the biggest takeaway for this is that you feel like you're doing something. There's progression. You feel like you do, And that's the biggest thing that I think games have kind of – it's the carrot. Like, a lot of gamers now, especially games as a service, are making the progression be the monetization. In order for you to progress, we want you to pay. You know, the progression element here is leveling up and then throw giving us money to get these skins, to get these these characters. That's the progression. And meanwhile, the real progression of the game is a slog. It's really nothing. It's just it's increasing your number from 12 to 13. You're level 13 now. You're level 14. Yeah, you get a new icon. But the real kind of progression is locked away behind money. And that's why I find too many games like that. That's why I appreciate Call of Duty so much is because the progression of the game, unlocking the weapons and, and leveling up your weapons and getting all these things to your guns and doing that stuff, it's really, it, it that's the pull. That's the what you want. Yeah, I don't want to go there just to say, well, I'm a level 50. I want to get a level 52 tonight. Eh, that really doesn't, it's just a number. But when you're actually unlocking things that, that, that enhance the gameplay, that progress the game, my gun gets better by using it. My thing gets better. That, that Where I find a lot of other games as a service, they take those kind of mechanisms and put them behind money. You know? Oh, well, if you want that new gun, new, that new skin and stuff, well, that's five bucks. It's like, oh, why can't I just unlock new skins for my, for my gun? Like, oh, I, no, you got to buy them. So a lot of this, where we got to watch, where this progression is turning into monetization. And that's where a lot of this, that's why a lot of these games just drop off. Because people realize that. They're like, there's no reason to play. And foreshadowing, uh, Gears 5 is out of the top 20 uh, of MPD. Second month. We'll talk more about it in the next show. But yeah, it went from 5 to out of top 20. So those legs... It snapped at the knees. But anyway, back to that Stranding. The thing is, is that there's progression. There's a sense of getting new abilities. There's a sense of a leveling up to make you better at your gameplay. And it's not that you're stumbling over and then now you're going to get the thing. Like, you're capable of doing your job. But the thing is, is that there is that hook. And that's where I want to go back to because... I want to see what's next. What can I do? What What's going to be next? And the story, which is basically the glue that keeps it all together, that basically brings the narrative together. Because it's not only just the game mechanics that you have progression, but progression in the story to figure out what's going on. So that's where all those elements are. Like games like Uncharted and stuff like that. Like, you know, the progression is not necessarily leveling up your character, maybe getting new weapons and stuff like that, but really to progress the story. So if the narrative is really good, and a game has narrative, <clears throat> see if these don't have narrative, but if you have narrative, therefore the game makes you go further. You know, same thing with Gears 5 had the great narrative in the single player. You know what I mean? You want to see where the story goes. That was always why I finished the single players in those games, because I want to find out where the story goes. But in games that, but in other games. It's the progression. Same thing with that with the uh, Days Gone. You know, want to find out what's on, the, what's going on with the story, the new camps, the new abilities. You know, <laughs> oh man, if you feel nest, this feel nest. But anyway, so you know, just to wrap up, you know, with the Death Stranding stuff, I'm really enjoying the first ten hours of it. I, you know, I'm not just gonna say go out there and go buy it today. Like you need to, need to, need to. But if you want something different, game looks amazing. The production value is top-notch. The music 
is awesome. Uh, you know, when when you're out there and you're just like trekking, and all of a sudden that music hits. It is such tranquil music, and it's it's, it's sci-fi ish, but it's tranquil, and it just goes with the environment, and um, yeah, and even the stories too. When you drop off the uh, the um, you know, the things they're not just like there's so many cameos in the game, but what's interesting is is that even the people you drop off, it's not just guys like thank you for your packages. Like no, there's a story. The guy's like, well, what's that on your on your medallion? Uh, what's this? And and there's actually stories about bringing their communities back online, and uh, and they actually have side stories and stuff like that. And then you could do side missions with them. And, uh, and again, I'm not spoiling any of the story and stuff, but I tell you, like, you know, there are certain elements to that story, which I was like, oh, crap, like, that's awesome. Like that. I, and, you know, I'm not going to spoil it, but I do with the bridge babies and why they are bridge babies. That to me was so co- I was like, wow, that is so crazy. Um, and why they're called bridge babies, the BBs. But, um, yeah, it, it's it's compelling. It's interesting. Again, don't buy it because it's a Kojima game, but buy it because it's a, it's a pretty cool game. It's a, I, I, it's different, it's interesting, and you know you don't need a degree to play it. Like that's another thing. Like you know, I don't know if his some of his comments are like you know this is a, a smart man's game or a smart person's game, but it's it's not. But it's different. It's not just like hold right trigger and uh, you know shoot or or a whole press X or A to jump 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 jump. It's different. And it, and it, and it's, it's different, and things are there for a reason. Like I, I, so far, so far, I haven't felt where I'm like just doing something and I'm rolling my eyes. Like I said, with the turnips, and, and just like, oh, why am I doing this? And then I should be, I could be playing another game. And that's always my thing. Like if I'm like doing something in a game and I'm thinking about like I should be like you know I only have a few hours today. Like I should play something else. That's yeah. That's not good, you know. But when I'm in a game, I'm immersed into it and stuff like that. Like, that's 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 where I want to be. Like, I don't want to be playing something going. I'm really, you know, I just want to get through these missions because I really, you know, I should. I want to play something else because I'm I'm not enjoying this, and that's rolling my eyes, going like, oh, here comes the turnips. Like, why do I have to do these gaming tropes? Just let me into the castle so I can progress progress the story. You started with this great story. I want to see where the king has me going. But I gotta go get the turnip lady, and then the turnip lady's telling me go kill the wolves, and then I gotta kill the wolves. And the turnip lady says she doesn't want those rare turnips; she wants new turnips. So I gotta go buy the seeds from the town, give it to the lady. Then she'll tell me the thing I need to know to tell the guy at the castle. And then when I get in the castle, there's 20 people that want to give me side missions. I go buy those people, then I go to the king and tell me what I need to do. And he goes, "Well, before I tell you what you need to do, you need to do a couple of things for me." And it's like, oh, gee. Now the king has me doing. Five different mission tasks, and I have to do these different things. Go to the west and talk to this guy. Go to the east and tell this person to, to shove it. Go assassinate the person in the south. Oh, and then go to the north and find this this rare relic that I've been searching for all these years. And take this NPC with you who will die on your mission. And then come back, and then you got to go tell that NPC's mom that he died on the mission. So go tell the mom that he died on the mission, then come back after you did all that shit. And then I'll tell you where you got to go next. <laughs> Hashtag do more things now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I was not an auctioneer. <laughs> but yeah, like, Jesus. Like, yeah. And then I'm rolling my eyes going, ugh. And the game's like, it's an amazing 80-hour game. It's like, oh, uh, yeah, wonder why, right? But anyway, Death Strand does not have that yet. But if it does, you'll be hearing from Grinds My Gears if I get those kind of things from it. But I don't sense that it is that. Um, and I'm enjoying it. And Kojima thinks he's a rock star from Hollywood. Whatever he wants to be, he wants to be. But all I say is that he made a, a really cool game. I think it's very interesting. You know, again, I'm not no Kojima fan. There's no Kojima Shrine. All I know him from Metal Gear Solid 5. I didn't play any of these other games. I think I played the original Metal Gear Solid for a little bit. First mission. But that's about it. But, yeah. Again, don't buy it because it's a Kojima game. Buy it because it's a, a good game. A real good game. I like it very much. And it looks amazing. Production value. And, again... 
This is the kind of... Here's my segue into my next video later on today. It is great to get these kind of games. This game and last... And, and as you know, uh, The Last of Us 2. These kind of games at the end of the generation because it makes you go, I can't wait for next gen. Unlike some other folks... Who can really have a real tough time trying to sell you a $500, $600 most powerful console showing cartoons. You need these kind of games. You need balance. And I'll leave you at that. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. 85, 95, 105, 200. Anyway. But I want to thank you, Grinders, for coming out to this early show. Stay tuned. Uh, I will have another show later on today where I will talk about my XO19 impressions. But, um, again, I'm really enjoying Death Stranding. Kojima, don't uh, stereotype and make excuses. The scores are good. And I know you're catering to the European audience at the interview, but, you know... Grouping a bunch of people because their opinions is not too great. But anyway, I don't think, I, I just think, I don't know why I got some. It was hit or miss. But anyway, I like it. You know, that's my opinion. You know, if I review score 10 hours in, I'd say definitely higher than an 8, 8.5. Like, I definitely think like this is definitely something to play. Uh, maybe even a 9 moving forward. Because I, I think the production, the story, and what you're doing. The fact that everything has consequences and it's not tedious so far, 10 hours in. Maybe while people saying 10 hours, it opens up. I'm like, huh? I'm like, I'm satisfied with the first 10 hours. It wasn't a Final Fantasy 15 where, you know, oh, it opens up in the world. Not Final Fantasy 15. Uh, what is it? 13. Oh, it's slog in the beginning, but then it does open world 11 hours in. I'm like, no, thanks. But, uh, but anyway, thank you again, Grinders. Like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit that notification button because I'll probably be doing it this afternoon around maybe 2, 3 o'clock or something like that. Probably around 3, 3.30. So stay tuned for my XO19. Um, you know, I want the Grindhouse big. It's going to be great. So thank you again, guys. I'll talk to you soon.